Do you know what has arrived here in Sweden? Winter. Hey, I'm gonna uh, readjust the mic, put it on this thing. It's cold, it's very cold. All right. Good morning to you all. This week I'm giving you a bit of a goldie from the live stream archives where I discuss uh, paving over uh, mistakes so that others don't have to deal with it, like writing bad code so that others won't have to. I found that this to be like a lovely little discussion because as, as software developers we tend to get th like caught up in mm, writing elegant code and forgetting that, well, it's actually like hiding complexity or making complex things easy for others that is actually our jobs. I find that comforting and sobering to remember. Before we get on to the video, I would like to thank today's sponsor, NordVPN. And I say NordVPN because that's how you pronounce it, damn it. I'm from Sweden, I can prata svenska. Anywho, um, like most people, I use a VPN to dodge the country restrictions on Netflix and to uh, test my country detection code. But uh, also, like, I think the biggest reason for me personally is that I just don't like government's logging exactly where I go all the time. If you use HTTPS sites, they can't see what it is you're, that you're transferring exactly, but they can't see the, the sites. And eh, I just don't want to give them that data, um, or at least make it harder for them. So I use a VPN. Um, um, NordVPN is like I like them particularly because they're incorporated in a country that does not require uh, require them legally to hold any logs, so they don't. Uh, and as well, they are very they're very affordable. If you use the coupon code that I'm about to give you, you go to nordvpn.com/funfunfunction and you use the coupon code funfunfunction to get tons off on their annual subscription. Thank you so much NordVPN for sponsoring the show. Now on to the video. I think that on the outside Stripe is this really nice thing. And I think that on the inside, culturally, it's also kind of that nice, but we do write a lot of code that doesn't feel nice so that no one else has to. Oh. And so it's a very interesting mix. Does that make sense? Oh, I love that sentence in general, really. Um, we write a lot of good code so that others won't have to. I think that's a yeah, great just, attitude as a developer. Yeah, I think that um, the reason why you're there in the first place, usually in a job as a software engineer, is you're writing code for an interface that other people need to use every day. Um, and it affects their life too. You know, it's payments or it's someone trying to register to vote or, you know, it's all sorts of things. And, you know, it's, it's our duty to make sure that it works as best as possible because, you know, these, these people need access to these services. So like I tend to sort of see it from that point of view. And so even on an API level, when your user is a developer, you need to be making sure that it's a delightful interface as well. Yeah. It's, um, I think that uh, like a lot of development, I've had these periods as a developer where I get stuck in this frame of mind where I get frustrated over the fact that I'm not writing elegant code or that I'm working with all these legacy systems and it feels like I'm just writing onion code uh, <laughs> there, where I'm just covering up uh, like a, a horrible interface. But um, there is partial, partially, I really agree with the, the the point that you're making that something like payment systems are very important. They, they permeate everything. And if you can make, add, like remove a lot of friction for a small merchant or somebody building an e-commerce store and maybe maybe even providing them with, uh, with the possibility to even build an e-commerce store in the first place, that's super valuable. But I think that there's also like a beauty in the complexity of them. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. While I yes. was uh, while I was in Rio, uh, I uh, they they have a pretty nice a pretty nice subway system, and especially like their uh, their gateways, you know, like the turnstile where you pass and pay. 
you can pay with uh, contactless payments, which means that Apple Pay works. So That's I didn't awesome. have like a Brazilian ID, like I didn't show my passport or anything. I didn't set anything up. I just like clicked my phone twice, it read my face and I just went bleep. And then I walked through in a country, like just after, like that is, so much complexity <laughs> hidden in that thing. It is remarkable. It just made me happy. Like it's, uh, it's just so cool. I feel like you really get it. I think the reason why I became an open source uh, developer in the first place was that I was frustrated with certain tools. And obviously as a developer, we all have that slight amount of, oh, I, I could do this better. Like we all feel yeah. like that. Um, and, and so, you know, a lot of the starts that I had in open source were me trying to express that and see if I could do something better. Um, and so I have a fascination with API just design in general and also just trying to pave over things. And also, like, how good can I make this interface where they have no idea how much detritus there is, you know, underneath the surface that I'm dealing with for that person. So, Yeah, it's... Um... Yeah, I think I think it's nice as a developer to remember that our job is to hide complexity elegantly. It's mm -hmm. not to make things look elegant on the inside. Yeah. I think that to a degree you that there are certain things you can do to like obviously make your code maintainable because you're working with a team or whatever. But I think that to a degree a lot of code is just going to be ugly because that's the whole point of what we do is to shield people from that. Yes. Um, and I think that obviously that's on us as an industry. The fact that we have to write crappy stuff means that we're obviously paving over mistakes we've made in the past, but it is very much our responsibility to always be improving that for sure. Yeah, I, uh, I, I totally agree. Um, art dev game, my two favorite online dev personalities in one stream, super mm. cool. Oh, everybody's so that's, nice today. Mm-hmm. Iran is really nice. <laughs> Such a cozy stream. Um, <laughs> yeah. Jonatas Bal Baldin, cheers from Brazil. Obrigado. It's nice. Uh, and uh, Sami from Pakistan. Do, 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 do. Right. <laughs> Uh, Blix Wholesome, do you have any insider information on when the terminal will be available <laughs> in Europe? I suppose not, but people are eager for it, I think. We are, uh, yeah, we get this request a lot, a lot. So yeah, you're not alone. Um, you know, obviously we always want to expand, you know, everything that we offer. Um, but obviously that takes time because of the fact that this is actually a very complicated, you know, um, industry to be in, in general, just payments. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, they're <laughs> Hi everyone. Today I will be lurk just lurking in the background while writing my master thesis. That's cozy. Yes. I really like the idea of like, people keeping us on in the background. So nice. Mm -hmm. do, do, do. Uh, so usually the way I run these streams is that uh, we just hang around for a while talking about whatever for a while, warming up, asking any questions that chat has, and then we uh, slowly move into coding for a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, after, gonna probably gonna take a little break, a little, a little bit of air, uh, about, about 50 minutes in, like 20 minutes, and then we'll code some of this little thing thing, this uh, Blink Stick. You can find them at blinkstick.com. And uh, Suze is going to uh, do some hardware therapy with me, like teaching me not <laughs> to be afraid of them. Therapy for software developers. It's good to just sort of stretch a different muscle every now and again and do something totally different to what you're used to. It can kind of, it can kind of renew your feelings of optimism for tech in general as well. And just, yeah. Yeah, I, I really hope for that. I've uh, been feeling a little bit of a, a little bit of developer burnout in the last last months, like uh, 
losing a little bit of that uh, spark that made me start developing in the first place, where you just went, mm -hmm. wrote a little code and colors appeared on screen. And I feel like it's a lot of uh, a lot to do with the fact that I have been optimizing for one vector of development, you know. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out our sponsor NordVPN, a link and the coupon code in the episode description. If you're new, welcome. This is Fun Fun Function, a show that I record live on Mondays on twitch.tv slash fun fun function. You can also check out more about what the show is about by clicking there or just, I don't know, subscribe if you're, or if you're ready already. Do it. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.